Hi guys, follow me on Instagram to never ever miss any of my crazy updates. Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I am driving this. This is the 1995 Mahindra Armada. This is the 994th vehicle Mahindra has ever produced. It is 26 years old and it comes courtesy of Koshal to me. You know what? Anyone can open the engine. All you have to do is open the lever here. Then open this thing also here. And of course, inside there is this lever. You press this lever. Yep. It's a bit hard. So I just figure that out. Oh, yeah, I managed that. Oh my God. Ho, ho, ho. Hit myself. But yeah, this is open. See, the struggle is actually real. This is so freaking heavy. My goodness, it's crazy heavy. I can put it on the windscreen to rest it and you can see the engine is vibrating like crazy. A Persia engine. Battery is big enough. And yeah, it sounds like a tractor. You know why? Because it is. Now, I press this a little too hard because of which I think the Mahindra logo has actually come off. So yeah, we have to stick that one. Oh my God, this Mahindra logo is falling all over the place. Kaushal is going to kill me once he sees the video. Ugh. Anyways, you can see the design is a little polarizing. Okay, they put the lights together. In fact, they had an Armada Grand which was like the facelifted version of the Armada. Which DC design actually designed the front and the various design aspects. Because Mahindra did not have pin in Farina or any design capabilities back in the day. So Mahindra actually took the help of DC design. Just imagine. So you can see metal bumper and yeah. Oh, can you believe that? That is the front suspension. It is leaf freaking spring here and uh, it's kind of narrow this car meanwhile okay you can see there are a lot of exposed hinges here here and almost everywhere now the tire size happens to be 195 but funnily enough although the tires are like two three years old it does not tell you the profile so it says 195 15. Pestle Khan's fingers of measurement will actually measure the profile which happens to be 75 obviously steel wheels they cover the drums because this car does not have disc brake had to obviously do such wheels so that the lack of drums are not evident jokes aside there is this reflector or light i don't know from the side you can see it's actually the replacement of the mm775 or the mm540 meanwhile the exhaust is placed on the side it's long enough this is actually a 10 freaking seater it can see 10 there's a side footstep and there the exhaust vibrates like crazy you can see pestle can fingers of truth will never come close to that exhaust it's a real exhaust of course and leaf spring at the rear so all leaf springs here is where the fuel actually goes there's this gap so you can hold on to why when people hang from this car that is where they hold on to at least in rajasthan a lot of people hang from these jeeps anyways you can see there's a side footstep in, in below the rumber plate spare wheel is mounted on the tailgate and the spare wheel size tire is 215 75 15 so it's kind of bigger and that's kind of weird it's a goodyear tire i think i saw jk at the front MRF at the rear, so this is like a tire shop on wheels right now. Let's quickly open the last row of seats and there you can see actually those are very 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 heavy and you get this nice mop as well to clean the seats beautifully well. Now the seats in this car are absolutely spick and span, just look at them. They look super duper awesome but not a single person in this car gets a head because there's no headrest at all, forget having adjustable headrest, just use this climb inside and realize that two people here will be a bit of a compromise and headroom is non-existent boss legroom and knee room as someone has to always me is also a bit of a problem there's a light on the top which obviously does not work because of the age of the car and this is actually quite long this is like a long wheelbase now i can pull the seat up yeah, uh, okay that seat is a little backwards so this will not really slot upwards but yeah this was a people mover Honestly, stuffing 10 people in this car was a bit of a risk. I don't know what this is, a cheese grater probably. Those are actually kind of short. And uh, here you see there's not much space on offer in the second row. Seats don't recline, lot of metal bits here and there. So in terms of safety, it was not that great. And you can see this is like a thar, of course. Now let's get inside. Leg room and knee room is a bit of a problem. Not a bit, quite a bit of a problem. This is the second row. I can barely sit in. Headroom is decent though and under the support is lacking completely three people would be a tight fit for sure meanwhile the dashboard design is actually decent let's get out because i can't really sit in here there's a handle to hold on to thankfully okay you have manual controls for the windows and you know what anand mahindra actually had this car with air conditioning he had put it aftermarket i believe 
oh you can see the light is functioning right now in fact i had turned on the lights at the front also did you manage to see that yahan pe nahi jal rahi wahan pe jal rahi hai you guys tell me iska kya karna hai ye logo toot gaya hai mahindra ka uh, i think we'll put the undergarment here just so that you know you get the new logo anyways manually adjustable mirrors of course and the handbrake was placed here very difficult to operate because it scrubs with this seat driver seat actually gets adjustment which is nice that is upright which is going to oh my goodness it reclines completely what a revolutionary feature and there are many more revolutionary features inside this car this is a button for god knows what and here you can actually keep stuff which you don't need you keep throwing it there and it somewhere which is the bottom meanwhile let's turn off the car because the vibration is so much the gear lever is moving all around the steering wheel is moving all around it has another revolutionary feature horn why see what is revolutionary two types of horns one here one here how cool is that ah it looks like the world has come to a stop when i turn off the engine because it makes a lot of noise yeah we just going to put the seat back into place double stitching all this is obviously after market including this system here which is definitely after market it's a touch screen this can be open but does not open there is this gap here and there is a coin holder this is actually an ashtray which is being used as a coin holder at the moment it says armada here which is place where actually the audio system could have gone now there is good amount of space on offer but this is for three people okay two people can sit here the person in the center is going to have a lot of fun when you slot the gear lever in his nuts and the steering wheel is huge two spoke unit pick that skoda and these are the controls for the wipers these are the controls for the lights i just turn it off for a moment i'm struggling to find where is the hazard light button meanwhile there's some buttons down here i don't know what this button does no dead pedal but you have plenty of space for putting your left foot anywhere you want and the gear lever is massive in terms of size as well okay i don't know what this is i don't know half the things inside this car now it has a very unique push button start i kid you not okay see check this out to start the car you have to push it inside one second yeah you turn it here then you push it and then it turns on that's like a revolutionary feature it and it's too small shh shut up and the instrument cluster is also quite decent because this is i think the oil meter fuel meter engine temperature and this is the battery temperature meanwhile you obviously get a speedometer in the center with an odometer as well and telltale lights are placed each and everywhere so yeah quite impressive a car but this was not a car because mahindra's kitchen itself says mahindra and mahindra tractor division very clearly they're saying it's a tractor and here there's a tata logo on the key i don't know why anyways let's start driving All right, let's turn it on. Absolutely rose to life with a lot of vibration. The pedal placement. Shut up. The pedal placement is actually quite weird, and the gearbox throw is also long. And off we go. I'm already in third gear, so I'll tell you something honestly. This engine is not refined at all. It's very loud. But Mahindra did not make this engine only. It actually comes from Persia. Yeah, Persia made the engine. It's a 2.1 liter diesel engine, which produces 62 horsepower at 4,500 rpm. And the torque output happens to me every time I dab the clutch. Now the gear lever hits me big time. And oh my God, there's no power steering, so obviously steering is on the heavier side. We have to be in. Okay, I have to stop and get into first. Come on, this is not an easy car to drive. Trust me on this. Quite loud as such. The engine is very noisy. Steering has no feel, but it's actually light enough once you start moving at low speeds or no speeds. The steering is extremely heavy because no power steering. On. This dude is not going to move. He's resting. Bhai, hurry up! Get out of here. Come on. What a dog! He doesn't move only. What to do with this dog now? क्या करो हिल ही नहीं रहा हो वन सेकेंड आई ओनली गो वेट 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 डॉगी मूव थैंक यू सो मच हाँ आई डोंट नो ही ऑल्सो थिंग इज अरमाडा विल नॉट रियली फ्लाई फ्रॉम हेयर एनी वेज लॉन्च कंट्रोल ऑन एंड ऑफ वी गो सो या सिक्सटी टू हॉर्स पावर एट फोर थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड आर पी एम वन ट्वेंटी न्यूटन मीटर्स ऑफ टॉक विच केम इन एट फोर थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड आर पी एम बट यू सी द पावर एंड टॉक आउटपुट इज नॉट मच स्टिल परफॉर्मेंस इज एक्चुअली डिसेंट कार इज वेरी ड्राइवेबल थैंक्स टू द फैक्ट दट द फर्स्ट टू गेयर्स आर वेरी शॉर्ट एंड थर्ड फोर इज ऑब्वियसली लॉन्गर एंड द रीजन फॉर लॉन्गर गेयरिंग अप फ्रंट और इन द थर्ड एंड फोर्थ गेयर्स और द हायर गेयर्स इज दैट इट इज एबल टू गो टू अ हायर स्पीड गेयर बॉक्स इज वेरी नॉची यू नीड टू पुट इन अ लॉट ऑफ एफर्ट टू ऑपरेट द गेयर्स ऑफ कॉर्स एंड बिकॉज द थ्रो इज सो 
long first gear is best avoid it because you have to go real far that's why most people will take it in second gear but then there's a problem in second gear if you start it in second gear the gearbox and the clutch will wear faster and fourth gear is very difficult because it fouls with your knee so that's a bit of a problem especially when you're in third and when you press the clutch you can feel the gearbox right in your i don't know what is that muscle called tendon and whatever anyways it has good road presence has good amount of punch as well only thing is pedal placement is so bad now that it can give you some pain in your knees i didn't use a wiper so we're going to use the wiper right away there are the wipers <laughs> they don't work that great either now the handling is quite poor because there's obviously body roll and leaf springs because of which the ride is also not that good the ride is actually very uncomfortable with more people in the car obviously the ride improves so ride quality is not that great but then the car makes so much sound because it crashes through almost every given thing this car doesn't have a suspension i feel that is a level of ride quality but then of course this is a 26 year old car and i'm comparing it with modern times so that's also kind of unfair at the moment you get onto the throttle it doesn't move you know why because this is a naturally aspirated diesel engine there is no turbo here although you know with the armada grand they came up with a 2.5 liter engine which again was sourced from persia and it i mean the armada grand had better interiors it had a five speed gearbox this is a four speed unit of course and multiple changes outside inside better performance and stuff like that and then they came up with the armada grand lx which transformed into the bolero when it was launched and the bolero continued with that Porsche engine however then Mahindra developed its own engine of course they had to eventually steering wheel has no feel or feedback but that's fine because this car really doesn't go at higher speed in fact one second let me slot this into play the top speed of this car happens to be around 115 km per hour the tank capacity is 45 liters and it will return around 10 to 12 km per liter which is also very decent yeah the suspension can get very noisy indeed the brakes are also not that great yeah in fact cars today from Mahindra they stop on their own this car does not stop at all if you apply heavy brakes also just kidding i'm just trying to refer to how bad the brakes are but then of course it does not get a disc brake up front although disc came in the armada grand and yeah the pricing of this car was around 4 lakh 80000 koshal's grandfather who worked in mahindra got this car for 80000 after 3 years so 95 was when it was manufactured and 98 is when he got for 80000 because he was a mahindra employee he got a steel deal for sure i wonder i should join ferrari right now but ferrari does not let its employees buy its cars that's a bit of a bummer so there was a four wheel drive version as well and with the armada grand they came up with the electromagnetic uh, sorry electromechanical four wheel drive system making it much easier to shift weight of this car 1610 kg the four wheel drive version actually weighed around 1700 kg uh, okay i'm just going to stop right now because there is a motorcycle which is coming ahead it's actually a scooter we are going to get into first gear driving the motor and off we go wheel spin because rear wheel drive for the win it used to wobble for 60 km per hour that's the reason many people actually put a stabilizer bar up front to stabilize the car and the rival for this car was of course the tata sumo what else could it be i'm trying to figure out if both the horns are same or different i think they are the same not much different as such this car is actually from where mahindra has evolved and evolved it is really brings back history fantastic effort back in the day when mahindra was not really making an indigenous car their first indigenous car was obviously the scorpio because the engine was their own here the engine obviously comes from Persia how many times should i say the same thing again and again now what you're going to do is we're going to try something really brave we're going to try and take a u turn in this area which means that i have to brake it does not it makes this noise if i try to get into first i don't know why I, i'm just so bad at shifting gear boxes especially the old ones and here we are going to take a u turn now we don't have a reverse parking camera we don't have reverse cross traffic alert because we don't need it please don't stall car oh my god i'm applying the brakes why is it not stopping yeah we just go a little further as such and now we are going to get into reverse which is where is the reverse gear it's front or no, no. okay then i'll manage don't worry it says it's reverse is there faisal what are you doing yeah now we are in reverse and so much effort to turn the steering wheel i don't need to go to the gym today for sure because i have already made all my muscles beep 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 yeah that's it reverse parking sensor beeping for no reason and of we go this is a car which requires a lot of effort from your side to drive and kudos to kaushal for maintaining it for all these years this car has been restored almost i think 507 times because it keeps rusting a lot i shut the bonnet and there was a lot of mal which fell not that kind of mal you guys are thinking about you know why because this car is near the beach and obviously the salt doesn't really help its body's cause 
my goodness, I hit 50 kilometers per hour. Yeah, so on a good road, it should comfortably do 100 kilometers per hour. But right now on bad roads, this is not the place for this car. Although you would expect such cars to be really rugged for bad roads and whatnot. Don't apply brakes like that. I don't have that strong brakes. I might just run over you as well. You just want to stop and we're going to launch it. Into first gear, revving the motor and off we go. Tops out at slightly under 40 kilometers per hour in second gear. You know what? The Armada was also sold in the US, but by Nissan, of course, because the petrol is known as the Armada in the US market. Anyways, guys, this is a short vlog of the Mahindra Armada. I think a really fun car to drive, very different and shows Mahindra's evolution through the years. The real evolution actually happened from the last generation to the latest generation of the Thar, but you can say MM540, MM775, Armada, Armada Grand, Armada Grand LX, Bolero, Scorpio, and yeah, that's how the evolution has happened. If you like this vlog, make sure to give it a thumbs up, that's a like button, and also subscribe to the channel. I will see you guys in the next video real soon. Bye-bye. But before we end, let's do one launch aggressively because I have dropped Kaushal out of the car so he won't say anything to me. And revving the motor. There's that punch. There's no turbo lag. There's no turbo. How can there be lag? Anyways, this scale model is also so freaking cool. Look at that. That's amazing. But this is four-wheel drive, which means that I can take it off-road as well. And Mahindra actually used to give the spec sheet with the car. Yeah, that's right. They used to give the spec sheet with the car. Isn't that so cool as well? And uh, yeah, I'm just trying to read some figure which I've not mentioned because I honestly did my own research, but bye-bye. Sure, nah, bura nah, laga nah, nah. Ki bura ki. Because at the end of that, it's just such a word to bolna hi padega. Camera jab band tha na, isne mujhe bahut gali di ki. Aise kaise bol jaega? This is super car, sports car. How can you say like that? <laughs> yeah, actually, roads itni kharaab hai na. Main pehli baar hai beach pe. Main pehli baar vasa hai 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 hai